He blames his mother-in-law. Did you tell your daughter not to put his name on a birth certificate? For destroying his family. You're lying right here on TV. You know what? You're the liar. I'm getting ready to turn a whole bunch of you into Child Protective Services. Plus, he's had affairs. Because you get an adrenaline rush. But no time for his wife. He made time every single day for eight weeks to sleep with my breath. How's your adrenaline running right now? Let's do it. I hate to see people suffering, and you've heard long enough. Stand by, Dr. Phil. Both of you. Take it. I'm going to get you the help that you need. In five, four, This is going to be a changing day in your life. Go, Dr. Phil. Well, Joey says all of his dreams came true the day he and his wife, Amanda, started a family. But his world shattered when the mother of his child almost didn't include him on the birth certificate. Things got even worse when Amanda took their daughter, walked out the door, and filed a protection order against him just six months after saying, I do. And who does Joey blame for destroying his marriage? Himself? Not hardly. His mother-in-law, Mina, who he says treats him like the scum of the earth. Take a look. Well, the first time our family was introduced to Joey, he said, hi, my name is Joey, I'm never wrong. My mother-in-law, Mina, was very judgmental towards me. She just did not like him. Joey is a very hostile, volatile, and disagreeable person. My mother-in-law, Mina, is controlling, mean, and spiteful person. When Amanda's cousin got married, at the wedding reception, he was yelling and screaming obscenities at Amanda. And I said to her, if he's mean to you, and you can break up with him right now, cut your losses. We started fighting a lot after I found out I was pregnant. My mom told me not to put Joey's name on the birth certificate until we were married. He reacted very poorly when Amanda told him. He became very hostile towards me. How dare you say something like that? Once my mother-in-law, Mina, started pressuring Amanda into leaving my name off of the, the birth certificate, I knew that we were not going to get along. The big turning point was when he pushed me against the counter. I knew at that point that I was definitely unsafe around him. First words out of her mouth is, I can't believe you pushed me. You pushed me. I called the police and I left with the clothes that my daughter and I had on our back. That was her breaking point. That was her proof that she could take to her family and say that I was a violent person. My daughter's marriage is over and I blame it on Joey. Well, Amanda says her estranged husband, Joey, needs to stop blaming her mother, Mina, for destroying their marriage. I have been told by Joey that he thinks that I'm crazy and that he thinks that I'm controlling and that he thinks that I am doing all of these things with malicious intent. I believe my mother-in-law, Mina, is about 90% responsible for all of our marital problems. My daughter had a protective order issued because Joey is violent and unstable. He has sent me text messages that say that he was going to come to my house and this and that and the other. I have sent some pretty nasty texts to her. She submitted a lot of these texts to court, but then she, she deletes out all of her text messages back to me. She turns it into a one-sided conversation. My mother-in-law, Mina, bragged about how she worked so hard to keep the birth of my son from me. He existed in the world for a whole week and I didn't know anything about him. To me, being a dad is a lot more than just being able to inseminate someone. The question that I have for Dr. Phil is, am I just crazy? Because if I if there's something I'm not seeing in this situation that I need to be seeing, then I need to have it pointed out to me. Okay, you think that there is a possibility that you're over-involved here? I'm open to any possibility at this yeah. point because clearly um, what we've been doing legally and whatnot is not working. How Parent it, time's not working, child support's not working. because you forced your way in on our relationship. You forced your way in there on the relationship between me and my children. into our relationship, Joey. She, she requested that the court 
put her in between me no, and my children I requested, so she can be in control. No, I requested. You requested that she do that. so that she could be in control, so that she could keep my kids from me, so no, she could make me chase no, them down. No. And then promise that, oh, I'm doing everything I can to accommodate you. No, I you. asked her to do it because I can't deal with you, because you, you are unpredictable and you are out of control. When why you do you I need your to... mother involved at all? My mom was my support system, and she was the one who offered me to do the parent time and when you're out with that. when you have a protective order in place it means that those two can't talk at all so someone else had to do parent time okay well what's your ownership in this he has none i've wanted to be a daddy my entire life but why did you say that you think she trapped you by getting pregnant because she claimed that she believed she was pregnant once and even though I was nervous about it. I was so excited to have a kid. I didn't, at the time, I didn't even care who it was with. I was just so excited. I'm having a baby. You say she's 90% of the reason that this marriage has caved in. 90% of the reason. And I ask you, what's your ownership? And you said, oh, I just wanted to be a daddy. I just, I mean, I just wanted to be a daddy. So you think you have zero ownership in no, this? No, absolutely not. I, I believe that uh, we, we, well, we got did 90% fight a lot. here. Is the ten percent divided between you? I two? would say that yes. And then what part of that ten would be you? I am a vocal person. I'm a very passionate person. <laughs> I I I like to say what I think a lot. Well, let me ask you about that. Uh, did Did you wind up in contempt of court for failure to return her personal property and failure to comply with the protective order? I I did end up in with a contempt of court charge because of it, but so at the same time. Yes. Yeah, but at the same time, she had come and picked up her property already. I don't have any of her mm -hmm. property. Have you yelled and thrown things at her while she was pregnant? I have never thrown anything. Did yes, you throw I have a yelled. baby mobile at her? No, yeah. I haven't thrown anything at her ever. During a fight? I believe I have. Did haven't. you kick the car during a fight? The police no, were called? there would have been a dent. The, the, the police weren't called because there wasn't any evidence. There's no police Did you push her into a counter when she was eight weeks pregnant? Uh, I tripped, we tripped over each other and yes, I did back her into a counter. Yes. Did you lose your temper in court to the point that they almost arrested you in the courtroom? Yes, because Amanda started claiming that I left her for another woman and was just throwing out some just flat out lies against me. And I didn't have a chance to even speak in that court. I was told to sit down. Have you caught, so they weren't being fair to you? No, they See, have I'm not been you fair. Talk. They, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Did you call her a bitch? I have called Amanda that in my life. Did you yes. call her the f word? Amanda, no. Oh, did you reserve that? <laughs> yes. Are you paying your child support? I have actually tried to pay my child support back in July. I gave I gave Mina oh. a check, so and she basically no. didn't deposit it. So I haven't made, I haven't tried to pay it yet. I've now have something set up with the government so I can actually prove that I'm paying child support from here on out. Yes. So the answer is no. You're not paying child support. No, but I have tried. I have made an effort. Hey, you try to pay child support. They, I gave, they, they won't take the money? I, yes, that's exactly what happened. I gave her a check. No, you did not. And give all, you check. No. Do, all you have you to do, all you have to do is not deposit a check. If I had a check, check I would have deposited believe it and helped me. I don't, I don't believe, care. I don't believe that you even know the extent of what this woman has done. I don't, I don't believe, believe that, you know that you know the extent of what you've done. I know exactly did what you know. Did, did you get in a fight with Amanda at the, at her cousin's wedding? Yes, I did. Did you hit her? No, I've never hit Amanda. Did you punch her? Ever. No. Never. Did you scream, call her a bitch? Um, we were both screaming at each other. I can't remember what, what was said. But I've never hit her. I've never threatened her. Never tried to hurt her in any way, shape, or form. All right, Amanda and Joey's custody issues continued to play out here in Los Angeles after they flew in to appear on the show. We'll talk about that when we come back. September 4th was to be parent time. He showed up at my door. Joey Lou, of course, runs straight to her daddy. I picked her up, threw her on my hip, and took off. I'm like, where are you taking her? So I called the police. My worst nightmare is that harm would come to my grandchildren. Amanda called, and she was crying. She was hysterical. She was bawling on the phone saying Joey had thrown the baby's mobile across the room at her. She was scared to death. She was terrified. I told Amanda, this is abusive. This is just going to get worse. Well, that was Mina talking about her son-in-law's violent outburst. Now, Mina says dealing with Joey's parent time is always a fight. 
She says she's just tired of all of his antics. But Joey you show says up when you're supposed to his be there. mother-in-law is just plotting calls. to take away his children. Take a look. My worst nightmare is that harm would come to my grandchildren. Mina has worked very hard to make sure that every single visit I have with either of my children is in her home. You know, she wants to pick a fight every single time we get together. September 4th was to be parent time, and he showed up at my door an hour earlier than typical. And Joey Lou, of course, runs straight to her daddy. She's excited to see him. He picks her up, says blank to me. Mina had told me that I'm not allowed to, to take her out of the house. So I just went ahead and, and picked her up, threw her on my hip and, and took off. I'm like, where are you taking her? And when are you coming back with her? He won't answer me, so I called the police. A couple of cop cars tried to stop me because I guess Mina told them I was trying to kidnap my daughter. I really don't like at all the way that he's handling his responsibilities at a, as a parent and handling these parent time exchanges, but I'm not in charge of him. Not anymore, you're not. I never was in charge of you, you Joey. You really tried. Okay, I, I asked him what percentage of this he had. I, he said, 90% of the reason my marriage is caving in is my mother-in-law. Mm -hmm. At least 10% divide between the two of you. I went, he said, these are all just misunderstandings. He's trying to pay his right. child support. He, he didn't. Do you work? So I work six days a week. Uh -huh. I pay for everything for my children. I've offered to take care of child care. You won't even tell me where she goes. You won't even, I don't even get to know where she's at in, in daycare. Do you because work? Because you're violent. Yes. Um, I work full time. You, you work full time. Uh, have you always? No. Uh, I mean, I, I have always worked full time. I've no. had some, some time where I didn't work, yes. Did he criticize you for working so much? Yeah, he got upset. Well, it seems like you were working like sometimes Around 11 hours a day mm -hmm. and he wasn't working, mm -hmm. but he was criticizing you for working so much. Yeah. That's what you told he us. He wanted me to come home. He also wanted me to come home and cook and clean and do everything You've else never for cooked him. or cleaned in our entire relationship. You've never cleaned a single thing. In fact, you That's stored you stored dirty diapers under our under our daughter's playpen That's because I kept asking you to throw them out and you and you would leave them in the bed you leave them on furniture oh, okay. and you started hiding them under the playpen because yeah. you refused to clean anything yes because yes. that's what I wanted to happen so what playpen. happened once you guys got here well Saturday night my stepdad Donald called Joey to ask him where to do parent time and he said I asked you not to talk to me which I have done. So I, I filed a police report asking the I decided to, to take it upon myself and figure it out. And it was a three and a half hour battle to get you to tell me where you wanted to do parent time. Instead because of just saying, yes, I'd love to do parent time, Amanda. Here's where I'd like you to drop our son off. Because you're required by law to let me know if you're taking our kids out of state. I had made arrangements to have, the, have my, my son lawyer tried up. to contact you. You didn't respond. I was supposed to receive an itinerary. I was supposed to receive contact information. And, and okay, I have well, no I could have left our son home. Well, I, I could have left no our, idea where our, I could have left I our son no home idea. and been in contempt of court for not giving you your parent time, and you would have thrown that I in had, my face. I had so I brought our son. I fought to bring our son. Station. You wanted to meet me on the street. Uh, well, here's the okay. th there's actually a text record of all of this. Uh, Amanda wrote this text to Joey. The bottom line is, do you want to see our son? Me, you, my mom, Donald, and everyone at Dr. Phil knows you are here. If you do want to see him, my mom and I will meet you so you can have your parent time. Joey to Amanda. The bottom line is that I have made arrangements with my family to pick him up where and when we agreed. The bottom line is you broke the law. So Amanda says, okay, fine. Don't see your son tomorrow. Just remember this was your choice. Let me know no later than 10 a.m. tomorrow morning if you change your mind so we can make arrangements to meet. To which Joey responds, you don't get to threaten me. The court order doesn't give you the power to take my son out of state and make demands like this. Does he harass you when you're out with friends? When we were together, he would call That's me all about. the time to find out when I was going to be home, why I wasn't home, why I didn't want to spend time with our family, why I would rather be with my friends than with him. Actually, the conversation was, if you're going to be late coming home from work, can you at least let me know when you're getting home so I know when I should start working? How many times would you ask that question in, say, two hours? It would be, it would be once every time she would not show up. 
She would not. I, I, I never, never caught not her while home. she was The only out. time I ever went to. What do you call harassment up? if you were out with friends? Asking what my daughter eats call you a lot? Would every text day? you a lot? He called me it? and texted me the whole time I was with them until I finally gave up and just came home. Like how many times? Probably a good 10 times. How many times did you respond? Two hour period. And you're lying right here on TV. You're going to lie. You have a history of lying. No, you, got, you know what? You're the liar, it. and you keep trying to accuse everybody else of being I've the never liar. Anyone. Joey, you're the only one who doesn't take any responsibility for documents. anything that happened. You have really court documents, documents that, that say that you that, that say that Amanda claimed that she left me because I was an abusive drug there addict. Is not I passed a drug test. Saying that. I, I pa it, there's a history of separation where Amanda says she left me. We were in That's court. Right. Then That's she started. The then document. she started. Then she started claiming that I left her for another no, woman. No, that, that was a lie. That was, okay. that was a lie. Stop. That was an interrupting and a misunderstanding between oh, me I and my boy. Oh, I left you for another woman was a misunderstanding. That's a huge deal. That's a lie no. to make me look like a monster. The attorney no. misunderstood his notes and made a misspeech. Well, my husband Donald has been watching the show and live tweeting. He has a lot to say. We'll hear from him next. Plus, Joey has a new roommate who moved in this last weekend. I don't know who that is, but we'll find out. Joey, you, you threw one, a mobile at me when our daughter was a month old. Thing. You That's threw the our there. daughter's Maybe. mobile at Maybe. me when we were a month old. Right. Try to take our daughter. You are a violent right. person. Joey was becoming more and more aggressive and hostile towards Amanda when he would come to pick Joey Lou up at our home. So right now we're doing parent time exchanges at a police station so that it won't be such a battlefield. Well, Joey claims that he wants to divorce his mother-in-law, Mina, Absolutely. who he feels has conspired with his estranged wife, Amanda, to take away his children. All right, Mina says Joey's antics during parenting time have gotten so bad that it is giving her distress. Now, Mina's husband, Donald, has been watching the show from home and tweeting up a storm about what he has heard today. The first one he has up is Joey has two sides. One is a consummate actor. Uh, then he said, they fought almost continuously from the first day we met him. Then he said, his annex are indicative of his personality. Scary. Um, what we fought about you was seen, her. No, that what was we fought about fight. was you and me, I and you're unwilling evil. to take responsibility for that. What did we fight about? What was our fights about? Money. Not we You we not having a money. job. We didn't fight about that. Oh, we did, Joey. We fought about her. No. Because you were so upset that I didn't like your mom. That's what we fought about most of the time. Yeah, and you I had no reason to not mean. like my mom. Did you tell your daughter not to put his name on a birth certificate? She came to me after a really bad fight with her and Joey, and here's exactly what I said. She was upset. It had been a terrible, terrible argument. She was newly pregnant, and I said to her, there are other ways to handle this, Amanda. You don't have to get married to him. You can break it off now. You can cut your losses. You can have the baby, not put the baby's any information on you the birth certificate. You asked her to claim that she didn't know who the dad was. Just put no. nothing on the birth certificate. The and there are ways that. in the state of Utah that if he wants to be the parent, he can take care of that. But commonsensically, is that reasonable? Is it fair? I mean, this is the he father of that child. He was already being so violent and so vo hostile towards her. Where's the police reports that say I'm violent? We if have I'm so the violent, police reports, Dr. You Phil. You, have you admitted police in the police one. report that you pushed me, Joey. I, I will say that I did admit that. I ended up admitting it in court because my lawyer said, don't fight the police report. I and then you're going to try happened. and say I no? Tripped, I tripped mm -hmm. over us. I, that's we, interesting. We tripped over each other. And that's what happened. Mm. And I, I had to go with it because the because the cop says because yes, you admitted, admitted it in the police me. report. But he did say there was no domestic violence. Otherwise, I would have went to jail. And then you got one one instance in all of this stuff where you're claiming that I'm violent, throwing things, I'm hurting people. Joey, you, you threw one, a mobile at me when our support. daughter was you a month old. Thing you that's threw the our daughter's maybe, mobile at maybe. me when we were a month and old. I tried to take our daughter. And you are a violent person. Okay, no. who's your new roommate? My girlfriend. His second, second girlfriend. girlfriend since November. Does that make me a villain? At while you're left, still I left divorced? Because I left somebody who was not a good person. 
still not divorced? What do you care who he's dating as long as it's not your daughter? Yeah. Well, here's the only uh, only problem. He has the two-year-old call her mommy. My <clears throat> two-year-old calls her <clears throat> Her name is <clears throat> That's what my two-year-old calls her. She called her mom because because my girlfriend had a teenage daughter that called her mom. And one thing about, about Joey, if you know anything about her, she likes to be big. So, she's, so she hung out with that teenager and she wanted to do everything that teenager did. That wasn't my plan. I just didn't fight it because it made her feel big. She never called her mommy. She called her mom. Amanda was mommy. I made sure that there was a distinction so that she knew who mommy was. Except the same for way when I won't we were talking on the phone, you'd be like, oh, you want to come with mommy and daddy? Never, ever in my life have I, I ever called her mommy. Anywhere, okay. anytime, ever. I want to know what would have to happen here to make you happy and peaceful about this situation. Joey and Amanda both say they want to learn how to co-parent their children as a team. Um, so we'll see if something can happen to put the anger and game playing aside long enough to give their child a chance. We'll be right back. Little girl loves the park. I took her to the park and we had a blast. So I went and dropped her off at home and Mina has now submitted an affidavit to the court implying that I had done something with my daughter and it mentions there is sand that was sticking to her bottom near her rectum. I've never said that Joey sexually molested Joey Luke. Well, Joey and Amanda have two children. Uh, they're two and a half and four months old. Joey says he is fed up with all of the false accusations that his mother-in-law keeps making, from molestation claims to not paying child support. But Mina says she is fed up with his annex and just wants him to be civil. Is there anybody here that is implying, insinuating, or otherwise suggesting that he is molesting uh, his daughter? No. No, and it's never been said. It's, that's never been said. I, I, I just got a it's public a record here on national television of which you will have a DVD where they acknowledge you are not doing anything inappropriate with I'll, your daughter I'll in that it. regard. Don't argue with a good outcome. Listen, I'm getting ready to turn a whole bunch of you into Child Protective Services if you don't behave yourself. I'm going to say this to y'all one time, and you're either going to hear me or you're not, and understand when you choose the behavior, you choose the consequences. You are hurt and you're angry, so you're being jerky towards these people. I'm not saying you are a jerk. You are behaving in a jerky fashion. Y'all are very hostile and defensive, supposedly on behalf of the children, against this monstrous human being over here. So instead of being mature adults that sit down and say, you know what? This was a bad decision for us to get married. The only good thing that came out of it are two beautiful, precious children. We don't have to like each other. We don't have to see each other. We can spend whatever money it takes to do this through a court-appointed intermediary. But if that's what you need to do to get through right now, then that's what you need to do. You are an adult. Deal with the father of your children. Right. She's here to support you. And I think you are well-intended and mean the best for your daughter and for these children. I, I don't question that. But you two don't get along, so disengage. But you are going to have to have these two children in common right. for the rest of your lives. Mm -hmm. When you are ready to act like adults instead of hurt teenagers, then you can learn to co-parent. I will make those resources available to the two of you if and when you say I can maturely engage in this and put my feelings aside. Next, we're going to talk to a couple ripped apart by infidelity and the extremes this wife is making her husband go through to prove he is no longer cheating. We'll be right back. Two weeks before we got married, I had an affair. When I was pregnant with my son, I was put on complete bed rest. While she was gone, I ended up having an affair. And I just remember being on the sidewalk and falling to my knees and screaming. Well, 
my next guest, Matt, says that he is addicted to the adrenaline rush he gets from cheating. Now, he is admitted to three different affairs. One while his then-pregnant wife, Ashley, was in the hospital with a life-threatening condition. Take a look. Ashley and I met when we were 18. My first impression of Matt was that he was the ladies' man. A year into dating, we got engaged, and we got married nine months later. Two weeks before we got married, I had an affair because I was stressed out. I confronted both of them about it, and they both denied it. After she had found out, she was very upset. When I was pregnant with my son, I was put on complete bed rest for six weeks. While she was gone, I ended up having an affair. I found out about that affair from text messages on Matt's phone. And I just remember being on the sidewalk and falling to my knees and screaming. I felt really bad. Matt's most recent affair was with my friend. The third affair happened when I got a text message that was not meant to come to me. We started texting back and forth, ended up having an affair. I keep tabs on him constantly. I can't account for time that I'm not at work, then it's like I'm out cheating. I am starting to feel that he actually is doing it to intentionally hurt me. Wow. You think he's doing what to intentionally hurt you? Having these affairs. Okay. I mean, he's choosing people that I have a history with, that I know, that I love. And you say that you have had three affairs. Correct. You think more. Oh, yeah. And you think longer than what he said. For one of them, yes, I believe it went on longer. And you say you're doing this because you get an adrenaline rush from it. That's the only thing I can come up with as, as to why I'm doing it. One encounter was when I, we were at her house for a family picnic and there was an encounter of the two of them in the bathroom and I actually came in the house and she had to hide in the shower. And afterward he told her how much fun that was and what a rush it was because he loves close calls. How's your adrenaline running right now? <laughs> The first affair was two weeks before your wedding? Yes. The second affair uh, was a six-week affair with a friend while she was in the hospital on bed rest. Uh, the third affair was eight weeks with another friend. Right. Okay. Um, now, she thinks you've had more affairs, have you? No. Why would she believe you? And she has no reason to believe me. I've never given her a reason up until now to He's believe him. still not giving me a reason to believe him. All he does is get mad that I don't believe him and that I'm suspicious of him because he thinks all he has to do is say, I'm sorry, I won't do it again, and everything's fine. Yeah, so you said, I, I wrote down a quote you said because I thought it was particularly focused on what I wanted to talk to you about. It says, quote, it's impossible to go out of my way every day and reassure my wife I'm not doing something wrong. So you basically think that this is just too much trouble. She's overreacting. She just needs to get over this. No, I don't think that she just needs to get over it. It's just there's times during my day I don't have time to drop everything I'm doing. But you know what? He made time to drop everything he was doing every single day for eight weeks to sleep with my friend. He found the time for that. <laughs> What do you want from him? I want him to stop thinking that he can <clears throat> solve all of our problems with his words. I want him to back it up. In what way? I don't even know. Well, That's well, why I'm he, here, because well, I'm, know, so, I'm so damaged. I'm so damaged. you're not doing something. Exactly. And that's what I've told him. I said, you need to prove to me that I'm the only one for you and that you love me and that you don't want anybody else, and you're not doing that. He is putting his job first. He admits he puts his job first. He will drop everything we are doing together as a couple, as a family, and deal with something from work that could wait until he goes to work tomorrow. So you're not feeling valued? Absolutely not. You're not feeling a priority? Oh, no. Never. You're not feeling loved? Never. Attended to? Never. Cared for? No. Nurtured? Mm -mm. Courted? No. You're just kind of there. Do you love her? I do. I love her a lot. 
Were you in love with her when she was in the hospital on bed rest having your baby and you were out having an affair with somebody else? Yes. You loved her then? Yes. I have always loved her, even through the things that I've done. Even though after that affair, he tells me now that he doesn't remember being sorry. Just how much has Matt's cheating affected Ashley? Well, you're going to be surprised. We'll be right back. says it's been constant accusations, mistrust, and fighting since he was caught cheating. Not for the first time, not for the second time, but for the third time, just 18 months ago. He says he's tired of having to go out of his way every day to prove to his wife, Ashley, that he is not doing something wrong. So what would you like for her to do? Eventually to be able to trust me again, like to show to her that I do love her, and I do want to be with her forever. But he just wants it to happen. He literally brought me a Starbucks one day when he came home from work and used it for three weeks. So, but I brought you Starbucks the other day. Doesn't that count for something? Oh, I'm sorry. You slept with my friend for eight weeks, so you have eight weeks worth of Starbucks to bring me. <laughs> She makes a point. <laughs> yeah. If I tell him, I don't feel like you're going out of your way for me. I don't feel like you love me. And that's what, but I brought you Starbucks. What do you need to do? I need, I need to get myself some help. My health, my emotions, <clears throat> my mind, everything is gone. At this point, I don't, I can't look at him and say that I love him. Do you understand that you're the one that ran this off in the ditch? Correct, Yes. So if, if you run a car off in the ditch, isn't it kind of your job to get it back up on the road? Yes, it is my... And if you ran it off into like not one ditch, but a second ditch, and then a third ditch, so you're like three ditches off the road here. And so you don't go out there and tow it back up on the road for five minutes, or 10 minutes, or an hour or two hours, you do it until it's back up on the road, right? You right. ran it off, yes. you get it back on. And you need to be asking what it is she needs from you. I guess one of the things that she asks me to do is to call her or text, text her while I'm at work. And there's times where, and she'll say that I, I needed to text her and I didn't have time to. Like there's days where my boss shows up and we walk my store. And if she calls and I run <laughs> late after work, she'll be, well, why didn't you let me know that you were going to be late? You need to let her know where you are and what you're doing. It's just that simple. Just let her know where you are and what you're doing. And in case you haven't noticed, one, she is the mother of your children, and two, she is way cute. <laughs> so you need to really, you need to really work on this. Okay? Now let me talk to you about what you need to do. This has really gotten to you. Oh yeah. And your stomach's a mess. Mm -hmm. Like all the time irritable bowel to that point, you're having trouble sleeping, you're saying your face is breaking out, you're having flashbacks. I mean, you're describing PTSD, right? Yes. That this was a big I'm trauma. I'm actually having flashbacks of things I didn't see, but details. I was right. about his affair with my friend in very vivid detail. Right, and you're playing that out yes. in your head. My point is, regardless of what he does or doesn't do, you have lost yourself in this. Oh, yeah. And you are a mother. Yes. So your children don't have all of who you are. You have to take care of yourself here. Matt says he's been faithful for 18 months, and he wants Ashley to stop accusing him and move on. Well, I've said I think there's a whole lot more to it than that. So is she going to be able to do that? She's going to be able to take care of herself. I'm going to tell you what I think next. Okay, now we've been talking about what your symptoms are here. Mm -hmm. Clearly, symptoms are something that typically are in reaction to something, either an infection, an illness, a trauma, an event, or whatever. You're having symptoms of anxiety, right? Yes. Um, you're feeling apprehensive. All the time. True. Mm -hmm. Are you feeling powerless? Oh, yeah. Like, I, I can't change this. You're having a sense of impending danger or panic or doom sometimes. 
increased heart rate, mm -hmm. breathing rapidly, sweating, trembling, feeling weak or tired. I mean, these are all symptoms of anxiety. Mm -hmm. You understand that, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And that affects the way you are as a wife, as a mother, uh, a friend, just a as a person. A daughter, it's affected every single part of my life. It, it affected every part of you. Mm -hmm. Now, the only person you can control is you. You can't control him. You have to take care of yourself mm -hmm. because this has gotten to the point that it's gotten a grip on you and you have to consider PTSD is an issue here. You, dreams and nightmares, you, you say you're having those, intrusive mm -hmm. recollections, some of them you even fabricate, yep. reliving the trauma as illusions, hallucinations, or dissociative flashbacks that you come up with, intense psychological distress if there's exposure to cues. Yeah. something that brings it all back to you. Mm -hmm. uh, you have this psychological reaction to those cues. You might avoid thought, feeling, or conversations about it on the one hand and then can't turn it loose the next. You may avoid activities, places, or people because you just kind of want to curl up and get in that fetal position because you feel detached. You can be irritable or aggressive, right? <laughs> yes. And you deserve every bit of it. So, <laughs> so you've got... You've got symptoms in, in both of those things. And the first thing we have to do is get you under control right now in the short term. Because this is gaining momentum, right? Yes. So you acutely, you're in a conflict here. You guys need some help as a couple. I'm going to make arrangements for that. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank all of my guests today. Uh, thanks so much for being here. So long. All saying her son Kenny was hospitalized after suffering a near fatal breakdown. And Kim, well, she was nowhere to be found. With her five grandchildren in need, Thelma rushed to their side, but she says what she found left her speechless. My ex-daughter-in-law, Kim, is a wicked, evil, horrible person. Kim has totally destroyed my son and the grandkids' lives. When we went to the house to pack up his belongings, the odor was so bad. I had to wear a mask when I entered the home. It was disgusting. I saw piles of laundry, animal feces everywhere. All the walls were filthy. All the doorknobs were sticky. I felt it was my responsibility and duty to step up as a parent, and the big mama bear came out in me, and I knew exactly what I had to do. Kim does not deserve these beautiful children. I hate what she has done to my son and my grandchildren. If Kim was sitting in front of me right now, I would say, you need to stay out of my grandchildren's life and my son's. Thelma was awarded emergency temporary custody of her grandchildren, and that's when she said she discovered what was really going on behind closed doors. Once I got custody, I heard so many disturbing things from my grandchildren. They told me that she would spend all day in her room and never come out. Kim was on drugs. She would walk around the house naked. And one of the children told me, Mama, Mama, you forgot your clothes. And she squatted down and peed right there in the hall. The kids also told me their mother would come in and wake them up around 11 or 12 o'clock at night and tell them that dinner is ready. I was told that she would bring other men into the house. And I could only assume that it was drugs and sex. When I heard all these stories from my grandchildren, my heart just ached. I felt like, what kind of an animal is raising my kids, my grandkids. You believe that everything you're saying there was going on behind closed doors. These children were being subjected to this. Yes. When I received custody, the kids told me such bizarre stories that I, it was unbelievable. My heart just ached. I, I didn't know what to do. You're saying that this mother was walking around naked in front of her children, Peeing in the hallway, just being totally neglectful, not, eat, not feeding them, not doing anything. This is what they have told me. You say 
She is an unfit mother. She doesn't deserve these children. That she is a horrible excuse for a parent. Yes. Kim is here. She says Thelma is flat out lying and is on a crusade. Not just a concerned grandma. She is on a crusade to ruin her. My mother-in-law is spreading lies about me, my children, and her own son. She wants to eliminate me from my family's life completely. Thelma tells my kids I'm a bitch, I'm evil, I'm a whore, I'm Satan's spawn. It's been about a year since Thelma took her children from me. Thelma had gone to a judge, told him that I had abandoned my children. I didn't abandon my children. I was struggling with addiction. This is the only way that I have to see my kids. Looking at pictures, they can't eat post. I miss everything. Birthdays, holidays, school. I honestly think Thelma's sole purpose is to ruin me. I think that if I were to die, she would probably do a happy dance on my grave. She's a disgusting woman. She pisses me off, and I hate her. I hate her with every ounce of my being. Well, Thelma and Kim haven't been face to face in over a year, but Kim is here now, so I'm gonna ask her to join us and let's just talk this through. Kim, Dr. Phil. Dr. Phil. Have a seat. Uh, you know Thelma, you've not seen her for over a year, correct? Correct. She has, I actually wrote down some of the things she said. That you are a horrible person. She says that you are deceitful, that you are abusive, that you are neglectful. Just to begin, what's the truth here? That thing that came out of her mouth. Um, to walk around naked and pee on the floor. Wow. You really went far with that one. Everything and that I have heard came from your kids' mouth. You're such a liar. She has custody of your children, correct? Mm -hmm. Now, your ex-husband wound up in a hospital with what lay people typically refer to as a nervous breakdown. Where were you? Oh, Where yeah. were you? I went to the house. Kirsten came out of the room and said, Dad just texted <clears> me. <throat> and told me if you show up that you need to leave, otherwise the police are gonna be called. Well, here's the custody paperwork, because we, we, went, we, we got this. This is an order for emergency shelter care and temporary custody. Reasonable cause existed to take minor children into protective custody. Due to homelessness, the parent's hospitalization, and the mother's apparent abandonment. Division unable to locate minor children's mother, Mother not being personally present in court. Mother must provide a drug-free urine sample prior to any visitation in the care of Thelma in the children's best interest. So did you not show up at Oh, court? I was not told about any court. It was a private court. Thelma There's was no private court. Oh, no, there is. You have the right to be there. The observation was you failed to show up. I was not... I was not noted. Okay, I had contacted Thelma three times. I didn't know about the hearing until after. When Why Kenny were you had, calling her? To find out what was going on with the kids. She had told my other children not to answer you the phone. You knew the address? And I tried stopping by. No one was there. That did was you, in Kim, Did you Kim's have world. sex with a 17-year-old friend nope. of one of your children? No. And he was 18, and it was after our divorce. <laughs> And it was after we were divorced and everything else. My kids were not involved in any of that until Thelma brought it into it. So the boy was 18. He was 18. It was one of your children's friends. No, I did not know he was one of my children's friends. Let's take a break here. Next, Kim's two oldest children say their mother is evil, cruel, and twisted. Uh, and has completely robbed them of their childhood. We'll be right back. I became known as the girl that mom slept with younger boys. My mom is cruel, she's twisted, and she is evil. My mom is a terrible mother. My mom is a pathological liar, she's manipulative, and she's extremely selfish. I feel my mother abandoned me. My mom was an in-and-out mom. She was there and then she would leave and go party with her friends. My mom is cruel. She's 
twisted and she is evil. Growing up, my mom was a bully. She was mean and she was extremely scary and someone you wouldn't want to be around. When she was angry, she'd grab our arms and she would shake us and she would push us and she would hit us. One of my mom's favorite sayings to us is, are you deaf, dumb, or just plain stupid? My mom cheated on my dad throughout their marriage. My mom had sex with a 17-year-old coworker of mine. My mom sent him dirty pictures and messages and he showed me them while I was at work. I became known as the girl that mom slept with younger boys. Right now, I see my mom as an acquaintance. She's not really a mother figure. She's just someone that has been in my life. I'm pissed off that she abandons us and comes on this show and acts like she's a saint when she's left six kids at home to be raised by my dad. I feel like my mom robbed all my siblings and me of my childhood. Well, Kirsten, I'm, I'm glad to meet you. You use very harsh terms talking about your mother. You said evil, twisted, liar. You're saying that it is true, that she did have sex. How does that come up in conversation? Oh, by the way. He flat told me, I've been sleeping with your mom. And I just like sat there and I was like, you're what? Then he went on like to tell me, and this lasted about an hour, that he just told me like every single detail. And then he told me that he was 17, not 18. And he showed you the pictures? Mm -hmm. So you saw them with your own eyes? I did. And it was your mother? Yeah. Okay. And do you deny this? I, yeah, I never sent him pictures. Texts and stuff like that, yeah. But, but you know. Were the pictures taken? There was never pictures taken. She saw the pictures. Are, are, you, are you saying that she's lying? No, I think that he was lying. What, that was it, it your mother? I just saw um, breasts and down. I couldn't see her face, but he told me it was her. And you did have sex with him? Yes. There was a lady that came over to our house and almost killed me because you were sleeping with her husband. She almost No, I me. wasn't. Kirsten. She slammed me up against the door and thought I was Kim. I and she showed up to Kevin's house with a gun. Okay. I almost died because of it. Kirsten, I'm going to tell you right now. I had no idea that any of that was going on. And I was not sleeping with her husband or anything else. I wasn't doing that. You left in October. We had no money. You, what did you do to our food stamps? We had no money. I know, Kirsten. You know what we did for my birthday cake? We put sugar in the pot and put water in the pot. And like, that's what we did for a birthday cake and icing. And it was awful, but we didn't have any money to go buy a cake. No, I didn't, I didn't have any money that. to get anything for my birthday, and it was fine, but you left a week before my birthday. Okay, here's... She sold the food stamps for drugs. <sighs> Do you remember leaving these kids in the car for hours while you would go and do drugs? No, I didn't ever do that. One thing that I told my kids was that um, I can't take back anything that I did. I can only make from what I do better. And you can't change what you don't acknowledge. And you've got this girl sitting in front of you now making the effort to tell you what's in her mind and what's in her heart. And you insult her by trivializing it. Is that what you want to do with her? No. <laughs> what do you think about all of this? There is six kids without a mom and I'm 18 and I'm taking care of the kids. Well, joining us via Polycom is Kim's oldest son, Kevin, who says he is so done with his mother he wouldn't even attend her funeral. Uh, Kevin, I'll turn it over to you. You don't even know your grandkids because you cannot stay away from everything that makes you evil. Kevin. You can't tell me that this is brainwashing from Grandma because I haven't talked to her in a year. Kevin, you don't let me see the grandkids when I'm down. I would stop. Because you're on drugs. I was sober. Kevin, I've been sober since last March. Really? Explain the drugs I found in my garage when you helped me move. Kevin, I've been sober since last March. But you also left in October, a week before my birthday, for drugs. Your dad. And you, me. no, wait, you were, I cleaned up your drugs in your room. Your dad kicked I, me out, and I was on drugs, Kier. But that wasn't a year ago, that wasn't 11 months ago, that was in October, and it was before that. Me, I'm the one that cleaned up your drugs. I was on drugs, Kier, that's why your dad threw me out. Let's take a break. So where was Kirsten and Kevin's father while all of this was going on? 
he's here, and he says not only did he have no control over his ex-wife, he says she nearly killed him. She has cheated on Kenny so many times I could not give a number, but yet he takes her back. It's the hard seeing my dad go through as much. And later... When I was growing up, I knew that my mom was doing drugs. She told us she had cancer so she can do more drugs. One night she was serving dinner and she passed out and we all thought that she was dead. Growing up, my mom made my dad seem like he was incapable. She would completely embarrass him and humiliate him in front of not only us, but friends too. She would call him dumb and she would say that you're not a man. When Kenny and Kim got married, I knew they were in for trouble. Every time she gave birth, she left for long periods of time. When she got pregnant with Kirsten, she was intimate with other men. A DNA test was done on Kirsten to see if she was Kenny's baby. The first time I ever saw my dad cry was when he was getting a divorce. It upsets me that my dad tries so hard when she turns around and stabs him in the back. It's the hard seeing my dad go through as much. She has cheated on Kenny so many times I could not give a number, but yet he takes her back. I don't understand my son to allow a woman like her back into his life for what? More abuse? I don't think there's a bone in her body that gives a hoot about my son. Well, before we add him to this conversation, let's hear what he has to say about his ex-wife and mother of his six children. Kim's the only girl that I've ever been with. I lost my virginity to her. I think that I will always have feelings for her. But I am upset with her for what she's done to the family. When we were married, she would take off and leave, oftentimes with a newborn baby in the home. I had a good career. Kim really ruined my name in the industry. One time she asked me to take out her trash can and as I was dumping it, I saw a note in there and it was from another guy and it said something to the effect of, I see you laying naked on the bed and you're so beautiful and that was painful. She probably cheated a thousand times easily. One time she pocket dialed me and answered hello, hello, hello and I could tell that she was in the middle of having sex with somebody. She got pregnant with another man. I knew I wasn't the dad. I told her that, Kim, I don't think that I can be a good father to this child, and that the baby was placed for adoption. She made fun of our son that has a speech impediment. She would call him a retard. She would say stuff like, duh, duh, duh. I can't understand you. I stayed with her because I loved her. I stayed with her because I wanted to keep our family together. I was willing to sacrifice, and I think I went too far. He wrong too. You okay, Kim? What'd you say? I asked her if she was okay. You asked her if she was okay? What was it that um, landed you in the hospital? I'd been suffering from psychosis for over a month. And for you, this was a major depression, a depressive psychosis, right? Right. I wasn't eating, wasn't drinking, lost right. a lot of weight. Um, couldn't sleep at night, just, just the thoughts would just race. Um, mm -hmm. It was horrible. And where was Kim at that time? Kim was in the area, but she wasn't with the kids. Um, we had been texting. She knew that I was having troubles. Um, Were you surprised that she didn't come to help and support you and, and see after the children? I was surprised. I, I badly needed her there. I, I was waiting for 24 hours about for her to show up. I'd been asking her to come. And uh, it was during this two weeks that you moved for emergency hearing, got custody of the children and removed them yes. out of state to where you were? Yes. And Kenny was life flighted out of state and we when we happened to be there, we were we were visiting, and um, so we went directly to the hospital. And you think he wound up in the hospital because of Kim? Oh yes, 
And what he, was it that she had done to him? The drug abuse, the, the lying, the cheating, the uh, going out with other men. Well, you would badmouth him to anybody you could. You still do to this day. Why would I want to do that? He's my own son. Yeah, you tell me. Yeah, you We've tell me. Why would I want to years, do that? Thelma. Why would I want to ruin him like you did? My grandma is going around town branding us as damaged kids and telling people that we're the meth babies. My siblings and I don't really like our grandmother. My grandma makes me mad right now because she will do anything she can to ruin our reputation and my dad's credibility. My grandma is going around town branding us as damaged kids and telling people that we're the meth babies. She's going over the top on some stories and twists them. I was miserable when she got custody of my siblings. I feel like my grandma doesn't approve of my mom and never has, but the fact that my parents still talk, she obsesses over. My grandma's goal is to completely get rid of my mom. My siblings and I don't really like our grandmother. You saw it as an opportunity to move in so that way you could get your son and the kids out there. That's all you did. Oh, I'm all sorry. All these promises. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I really am. Holy <laughs> that's the first time I've actually heard that come out of your mouth. I felt like, oh, well, this is a great opportunity mm -hmm. for me to have that's stay. All, that's it, period. Great opportunity. Great opportunity. Can now. I finish? I am no. talking. I don't It's care. a great opportunity for me to stay in the motel with the kids because I didn't want to stay in your ha filthy house. You sold everything else in the house. I that, sold what you did it. didn't sell, you threw out down the stairs everything that we had worked so hard for. Kirsten, you was, were there. No, 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 what no. What did I do? This everything is not thrown between, away. Kirsten, this is coming from everybody. Well, it, and it's, it is this true. Is coming we lost her was the one that was in charge of what needed to go and what stayed. I wasn't in charge. nothing about How old is she? Can we pause? Everything got thrown away. There was no order. There was no anything. Everything just got thrown away. I don't I know who said house. it, but it was just said, throw everything away. So we lost everything. We lost our clothing. We lost our TV. We watched our TV fly down the stairs. The TV already had a hole in it. No, it so just it, had a little crack in the corner, but it was the only TV that we had. We worked hard for everything that we got. We didn't get handed anything. And even if we begged, where were you? Where was I? Yeah. I'm supposed to dish out the money all the time? Is that what it I am? It wasn't always what we I'm needed. Just, I'm only good when there's money involved, and I stopped dishing it out years ago. What? For love. For a grandma. For nurturing. Where were you? Where were you? You were just there to badmouth me. You're right, Kirsten. Oh, does that make you happy, Grandma? No, it that has that nothing to do with Grandma. What is it that, that you want to happen now? I don't think their Grandma should have anything, it should be allowed to have anything to do with them. You have how many children staying with you now? Kenny has all of the children now. So you have none staying with you now? I have none. Okay, so they're not staying with her now, is my point. Right. So you're saying you don't think they should be with her? They're or not around with her. her. So they, they're not with her? No. I think they need to be with their dad. Okay. So you're, you're good with the arrangement? Mm-hmm. Okay. I just want her out of their life. Okay. Well, we're going to take a break. I, I want to hear from dad here. And uh, I, I, I think the question that you raise is, is, is Thelma's hatred for her ex-daughter-in-law actually harming her grandchildren? We're going to talk about that after the break here. It wasn't enough for Thelma to tell the town, her friends, a judge, a caseworker, that I'm just some woman who had kids and I don't want them. And I think that's why she wrote into the Dr. Phil show is to try to convince everybody that I don't love my kids, that my kids don't want me. And she's going to play the sob story and for me, look at what all the horrible, rotten things I've done. Her agenda is to completely have me eliminated out of my kids' lives. Kenny, I'm, I'm curious at this point um, what you think the current situation is and, and what you think it needs to be. Do you think the children could and should have a relationship 
with Kim? I think they should. <clears throat> I think they should. They need their mom. Do you think that, that your mother should have a role in your children's lives? I think that she should. She should just be a grandma and, and bake them cookies and be happy to see them and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I think it's clear that you have a very strong and powerful disdain for this woman. Would you agree with that? I would agree, yes. Yeah, and that's not likely to change, right? No, no, not with her track record. Ever since you first met me, you didn't like me. Yeah, um, and, and I, I think it's fair that you have a disdain for this woman, right? Uh, I think it's pretty clear that yeah, and that's probably uh, not going to change. And, and, you know, the good news is that you two don't have to be in each other's space. But you do have some common elements here. And, and I agreed to do this show for one reason, and one reason only, and that is that there are some children that are caught in the crossfire here. And, and I, I always like to come in and, and try to get everybody to adopt an agenda that's in the best interest of those that maybe don't have as good a voice. And, you know, Kevin and Kirsten are old enough to have a voice, and they're old enough to make the choice and, and move away. And it seems to me that both of them have uh, survived and turned out to be pretty nice young folks, despite a lot of what they've been through. Yes. But we do have some young people that are still pretty impressionable here. And um, I, I can tell you that you don't have to like her. You don't have to hold her in any positive regard whatsoever. But she will forever be the biological mother of these children. And if you assassinate her character, however deserved you may think it is to those children, you are doing them a grave disservice. Mm -hmm. And if you assassinate the character of those children's biological mother, it will come back to haunt you in ways that you have yet to see. Because those children, the day will come when they will resent you for that, regardless of how much she may or may not deserve that. And I'm just telling you that you need to learn to bite your tongue. Just simply take the high road. There's so much less traffic up there. Just take the high road. I've, I've done and, that. And At first, I was shocked. I yeah, was shocked. I, I do, but just, just take the high ground here and... You'll, it's so much more becoming to you to do that. What I would say to you is you're the leader of this family and you need to father those children. And to the extent that she positions herself in a way that she can be a healthy factor in those children's lives, then I, I would certainly support that. But do not be an enabler. Do not be blind and allow her to be in those children's lives. Parent is a noun and a verb. It's not just something you are by birthright. It is something you do, and you do it in a responsible fashion, and if she relapses into drugs, if she is bitter, if she is angry, if she is in denial, if she fails to recognize her responsibilities and does not respond to these children in a proper way, then you have to put very strict boundaries there. If she's living in motel rooms, if she says, I'm going to show up, and she doesn't show up, she has to become a citizen a contributing citizen first mm -hmm. and become a mother second. If she's not, if she doesn't have a job and pay her own way and show up and become a responsible contributing member of society, it's going to be a very difficult time to be a responsible parent. Mm -hmm. And it is your job, however much you may love her and have a broken heart with her or whatever, 
your primary responsibility, your undivided loyalty is to those minor children. Mm -hmm. Okay? And to the extent that you can broker a relationship, a healthy relationship between them and their mother, by all means do that. Learn to co-parent with her. Mm -hmm. But you cannot, let me, when, when there are things like a woman throwing her up against the wall, was there a gun in her purse or not? You know, uh, th the fact that those words are even in sentences involving one of your children right. is exclusionary criteria for her being in the life of your children. That kind of rhetoric must be excluded from conversations about mother and child. And until they are, she's not a candidate for being in their lives. So you need to make sure that's true. Yes. Okay? And you need, some, you, you need some help in coming up with a co-parenting plan, and I will get you the help to do that, someone that will monitor that and make sure that that, help, that happens in a healthy way. Okay. Okay. I will, I will, that's just my gift to y'all to do that. I, I, I that. want you in your children's lives as a responsible mother, but not as an irresponsible. Well, you agree with that, right? Mm -hmm. You agree with that. All right. Coming up, a guest who says her body should be donated to science because she just doesn't sleep. We'll meet her after the break. My next guest, Carrie, says she's lucky if she gets more than four hours of sleep a night, and it's not because she's burning the candle at both ends. In fact, she says she is desperate to get more sleep because her marriage and sanity are going downhill fast. I think I'm a freak of nature because I do not sleep. <sighs> Dang it. What person does not sleep? I started having trouble sleeping after the birth of my son in 2008. He was premature and he spent nine weeks in NICU. So my son did come home and I had anxiety because I was so scared something was gonna happen to him on my watch. My son was diagnosed with Crohn's disease last year. Now I don't sleep because anything can happen in the middle of the night. <sighs> Another night. My brain never goes into sleep mode. It's always on. I toss and turn all night. The slightest noise will wake me up. I usually get anywhere from two to four hours sleep a night. And I've gained a lot of weight since I've stopped sleeping. I put on 100 pounds. Every morning I wake up with a headache. I'm angry and irritable all the time. My husband and I do not sleep in the same bed because any movement he makes will wake me up. The insomnia is destroying my marriage. I feel terrible that I'm putting my family through this. I don't like the person insomnia has created and I do not want to share my bed with it anymore. Oh! Well, Carrie is here, and also joining us is our longtime good friend, Dr. Frida Lewis Hall, Chief Medical Officer of Pfizer. So, welcome. Thank Glad you. you're here. So, how, so how did you sleep last night? Really? Yeah. Hardly at all. Not good. Insomnia, but plus the excitement, and yeah, not at all. From a medical standpoint, mm -hmm. uh, Doc, how often does this happen? Yeah. So, Carrie is really not alone. I mean, sleep trouble is very common long-standing, not just occasional, sleep disorders, um, nearly 45 million Americans suffer. 45 million? 45 million Americans. So <clears throat> insomnia is one of the most common forms of sleep disorder here in the United States in particular. So what is that? So insomnia is simply stated a difficulty falling asleep, staying asleep, or the combination of those two things. Um, in order for it to be chronic insomnia, then a person has to experience that three nights a week for at least three months. So it sounds like this might be what Carrie is experiencing, but she needs to see her doctor for a diagnosis to see what it is. And of course, we should talk about that in a minute. Okay, so how did you sleep before your son was born? Because you said you, you had issues and then hospitalization and all. How did you sleep before that? Uh, like a teenager, I could sleep from 9 to 10 hours. I okay. enjoyed my sleep. So you clearly have an onset trigger. You know yes, that's what started that. Yes, that's when all this started. Loss of sleep can happen for a whole host of reasons. Sometimes people know exactly why, and some people they don't, they don't know why. And there are a whole range of causes. Everything from stress and anxiety, as you've described, to things like thyroid conditions or 
um, certain medications may cause this. In addition to that, common things that we do, we may not think, affect our sleep, like overuse of stimulants, nicotine and caffeine. And then to add on top of that, there are other conditions that can cause uh, loss of sleep, uh, like sleep apnea is another example. And this, as you know, occurs frequently in people who are either overweight or um, who are obese. For and being another. a caregiver is clearly stressful. But, and you know, you had those issues early on and now with Crohn's disease. Yes, sir. So you watch that. But look, if, if, if you love your child and you know you do. <laughs> yes, we I do. know you do then you have to take care of your child's mother. And that's what scares me the most, because if I don't get rest, if I don't get sleep, I'm not going to be at 100%. Well, no, and you can't give away what you don't have. If, if you're the only mother your child's ever going to have, and so y you have to take the time and realize it's not selfish to take care of you because you don't want to be emotionally bankrupt, you don't want to be physically bankrupt, and you have to be willing to ask for help, whether it's for other people to help out or support groups or babysitters or family members. You've got to be willing to ask for help. Yeah, and, and I'd like to add on another really good reason to pay attention to sleep loss. So, you know, we know that there are a lot of things that happen, and Carrie, you mentioned some, you've just uh, mentioned a few others. Feeling bad the next day or over time just not being sharp, being um, less uh, alert and able to deal with things emotionally bankrupt and physically as well. But that, it doesn't stop there. So chronic sleep loss or lack of sleep over periods of time actually contribute to very serious medical conditions and can be life-threatening. So it's been linked to um, diabetes and heart disease. There was a recent study that actually found that adults who get less than six hours of sleep a night, six hours of sleep a night over time have a four times greater risk of having a stroke. So this is a real health risk beyond the day-to-day -day risk that you carry. So it's especially important to take this seriously. Talk to your health care provider to get a diagnosis. Your health care provider may refer you to a sleep specialist uh, to help figure out what is going on. And the good news is that most sleep disorders actually can have uh, effective treatment. There is uh, psychological, behavioral, and or medical treatments that can be effective in treating sleep disorders. So there's a lot to know about them. This is a very complex area. Um, and of course, for more information on good sleep habits and information and resources for sleep disorders, you can visit gethealthystayhealthy.com. Interesting, I had a, a friend that was having this kind of problem recently and I sent him to gethealthystayhealthy.com and they, you guys have a great action list there. There's like 10 points there. And he went through the 10 point list and it talks about not, to, he talked about don't take naps late in the day, 